Hi there, it's Bradley Knight here. Um, today, I'm very fortunate to uh, have a, a very informal conversation, which I'm going to share with you. Um, this is not a structured interview by any means. Uh, it's going to be completely off the hoof um, with a, uh, a good friend of mine, which I've met um, probably about a year ago, I think it is in about now. Um, his name is Dean Kirby, and he's on the line now. Hopefully, this recording connection will come through well. If it's not... It's Dean's fault, not mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, hi, Dean. Oh, hi, Brad. How you doing? Yes, good, mate. Hank, thanks, thanks for coming on today. Um, like I say, it's going to be very informal, yep. um, coffee room sort of table sort of chat. Yep. Um, the reason why I want to do this is 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 basically your, um, and this is not disrespectful, but a layman in terms of yep. legal land. However, um, you you are someone that whilst a, a layman have. Yep. Uh, been exposed to a number of legal issues yep. uh, more recently, <laughs> yeah. ironically, um, than than before you met me. <laughs> yeah, ironically, they've all come about since I've met you. Yeah, yeah. The uh, but that's probably because I'm trying to tidy them up for you, Dean. Although, yeah, yeah, not true. any of them I knew about before I met you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but that said, um, you 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 have um, an ethos, a position in life. Yep. Um, you're someone that I respect and actually yep. known to trust. Yep. Uh, so I thought this would be a great opportunity for someone, uh, oh sorry, the people that listen to these short videos, mm -hmm. um, are, I'm going to try and ram this into uh, 30 minutes, or, or maximum 40 minutes, but ideally 30 minutes, mm -hmm. um, just to have a quick chat uh, of someone that really is totally off, off beat, off sector, yeah. um, but shares similar views, but may not be the same views as me, on every subject, and I kind of like the fact that you may not uh, share the same views as me, but we've never, to be fair though, um, whilst we've talked quite a bit, yeah. uh, we've never really actually sat down and had a chat and said, you know, what's your view on this and what's your yeah. view on that? Yeah, now, so same as to say, I don't want to talk about that sort of element today. Yeah. Uh, what I really want to talk about is you yeah. um, and, it, and explain a bit about um, your background. Yeah. Um, your subjects, uh, case issues, and where you've developed uh, using, um, I wouldn't say methods, I hate that word. I also hate, you know, people say, oh, can you send me a template and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't, te life's not a template, and every different case is extremely different. Um, although templates can work for certain issues, but it's very limited and narrow. Yeah. So, 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 Dean, let's first off, um, we actually kind of briefly discussed this question, yeah. how you got into this, um, and I wasn't too sure uh, how to describe it, but I'm thinking on the lines of, um, you got bought into this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just, uh, yeah, hi Brad, thanks for uh, interviewing me, it's uh, a pleasure to be interviewed by someone that I respect, um, especially for the work you do, um, you're one of life's, you're going to get embarrassed now, I'm in embarrassing, embarrassing now, but uh, you're one of life's uh, good people, one of life's unsung heroes, so um, hopefully... I'm just about to puke. <laughs> so hopefully uh, when people hear this recording, they check into some of the work you do. Uh, how I got into this was, strangely enough, through an issue on planning. I bought a property many years ago that had heavy uh, restrictions. Technically, it was a holiday home. I challenged the particular issues uh, regarding the, the uh, planning um, covenants. And uh, all of a sudden, I found myself in legal land. And uh, not only was I in legal land, I was in legal land where uh, planning is very much an opinion-driven scenario. Um, employed various different experts. I've got my fingers in the air when I say the word experts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and then I realised, uh, hold on a minute, the clock's running here. Am I really getting impartial, uh, you know, impartial, good, solid advice here? Or do I need to get my head down and hit the books and start asking some questions? And, um, you know, I've got a background as, as, as a designer, uh, mechanical, electrical designer. So I come very much from a background of it either works or it doesn't work. It's as simple as that. It's either on or it's off. So it's, you know, all the research I've ever done is it's got to be there, black letter law. 
The one thing I realised with a planning world is that even though it's there in black letter law, as you well know, Brad, since I've got to know you very well, it's all down to interpretation and it's all down to application. And that's where um, basically these people that call themselves government, let's face it, they're just men and women in a room that call themselves government, sit down on, and make up these rules. On that, um, also particularly planning, obviously, because of my background, yep. uh, policy changes. Yep. So, like, for example, one year, normal windows, maybe in the next year, <laughs> it may not be. Yes, exactly. That's how prophetic it exactly. can get. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and it really is. And I urge people that are listening to this recording to remember one thing that you, you, you've you really got to look at the interpretation of the law. And, uh, you know, as you well know, Brad, you can get a particular, uh, you know, uh, ruling on, on, on a particular uh, section of law one day and get a compl completely different opinion the following day or even that afternoon. And, uh, and that's quite literally, I, I don't think it's a massive conspiracy theory. What I think it is, it's down to, completely down to human interpretation. And laws are written by humans. They're, they're not sent down by a, you know, by, by a higher being. And, uh, of course, it's, it's money for the boys. And talking of money for the uh, boys... Sorry, go on. Yeah, the thing that I've often seen in planning meetings where I've submitted planning applications, um, not for my house, but for other developments, yeah. I hate the word... I don't like the look of that. <laughs> yeah. How, how can they yeah. get away with saying that? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think this would look nice if you did this. So exactly. they're changing roof lines, paint colours yeah. on the outside. Exactly. Um, they don't want these colour windows, all that sort of stuff. So you're exactly right. So so basically, um, you, you did you get your ass kicked in that? Or what well, was no, the outcome of what, that? What, well, no, what, what I did was I headed a, 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 a planning... Uh, what I did was to my local... Uh, I, I live on a, a, a very old country estate. In, uh, mm. in in Buckinghamshire on the Thames, and very very lucky to live here. Exceptionally lucky. Yeah, it looks gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it really is. I'm, I I mean the the country estate itself was listed in the Doomsday Book. So to give you how old the estate is, and mm. uh, you know, uh, it's the, a bit depressing. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and basically all it was was to take the. Uh, the, 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 the planning restrictions, the holiday restrictions, and just extend them from 48 weeks to 50, to 51, but to kill, still keep it as a, as a holiday development. And, uh, and, and the, the psychotic, um, the psychotic uh, uh, um, um, computer says no scenario I got from these planners that's absolutely uh, knocked me sideways. Uh, because you know it, it was like the world was going to come to an end. You know that you know the roads were going to get filled up with traffic for people using them as full time <laughs> homes. It, it, you know um, the doctors and the dentists would collapse from the extra. You know, develop, it, we're only talking sixty properties here. Sixty, six zero. We're not talking six hundred. Mm -hmm. You know, doc doctors and dentists would collapse under the weight of patients. And, and it was just so literally what, what what you're basically saying is there's a covenant on there yeah. which uh, uh, which prevents you from having access to your home your yeah. family home yeah uh, for four weeks a year that's right that's correct it's just four weeks in February and that's all it was and, and, and the demented approach from our, our local authority absolutely knocked mm. me sideways so it sort of gave me a and bit is this your primary this, this is your primary home where it's mortgaged as a tr traditional family That's right. home. It's That's not uh, mortgaged as a let or anything like no, that. No, it's mortgaged as a traditional home. Uh, we we we've, we left our, our our house in London, as you can tell. You know, I've got a London accent, um, which which we, you know we're lucky enough to rent out. Um, we just moved out, obviously, because of better schools, etc., for the children. And you know, it was all, all for the right right reasons. But uh, we hit against this planning brick wall. And uh, what I did was I galvanised the local community together. And, um, and and out of the sixty odd properties, I managed to get nearly fifty people interested. And uh, took the whole thing through to planning stage, got refused, and then took it to the planning inspectorate, thinking it's a slam dunk win. And uh, the planning inspectorate done a copy and paste job of the local authority's refusal that absolutely gobsmacked me. 
And while all this was going on, what I was doing is I was doing mm. some research as into the whole, what would you call it, the law, what the law world, the that you know that 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 uh, you know obviously you're immersed in. And um, originally, I went down the Freeman sovereignty route and and, and listened to a lot. You know, uh, starting off with um, you know listening to people on YouTube, you know, various different gurus that were popping up. I mean, I think I've listened to every... What sort of names would you mention? Well... This name drop. Yeah, well, okay, I'll name drop. I mean, you know, you're looking at Robert Menard, uh, the Canadian guru. Then, uh, obviously, then I started listening to John Harris, uh, who is our version, you know, UK version of Robert Menard. uh, And these people are are seriously... um, a seriously think, think blue sky thinkers thinking out of the box um, with mm. re, with regards to you know these controls that are upon our, put on us uh, by these men mm. and women that, uh, that that call themselves government. I went even deeper, you know. I I uh, researched into um, a lot of people may not even know about them the the, the Montana Freeman, where um, a group of guys in the early eighties got together. Um, where they effectively tried to set up their own state within a state. And uh, Mm. they all ended up doing anywhere between 18 and 36 years, respectively, between the 12 of them. Uh, All because... What about the prison? Yeah, yeah. Gosh. Yeah, I mean, if if any... (laughs) If anyone wants to Google the Montana Freeman uh, guys, whoever's listening to this, it's 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 fascinating. And there's lots of, uh, you know, um, talk show... Uh, Talkshoe is a is a pre is is a recording system uh, for interviewing lots of uh, Montana Freeman recordings. Um, again, it just goes to show that if you try and step out of the remit of what's been set up, um, you know the penalties can be quite severe. Wow, I've never heard of it. Being to be honest, yeah, yeah. Like 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 I said, I am a bit of a a bit of a bugger uh, when you I you are so fucking anal I know it's unbelievable. I'm terrible and I'm terrible you you and you have the benefit of being in your van quite a lot and you yeah just, exactly just, yeah 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 because technological devices uh, yeah, devices yeah. which uh, I Exactly, exactly, Brad. You know, and, and, and this is the, the advantage that I've got, you know, uh, quite lucky, really, because I can podcast all of this stuff. And while I'm back and forth into London, you know, going about my job, you know, I don't I, I don't listen to music on the radio. I listen to these these podcasts uh, and, you know, a lot of it, I would say at least 75 to 80 percent of it is absolute nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, me and you have discussed l- lots of the Freeman sovereignty stuff, and 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 even though you're with these people in spirit, and some people may be ready to switch this recording off, guys and, and ladies out there, please, please, please remember one thing: when you're taking these theories into a court of law. You know, you're, you're you're going into a football match with a rugby ball under your arm. You know, you're 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 just basically exposing yourself. Um, you know, when you're going into their court, you need to use their rules and their processes against them. Mm. Um, you know, going back to the gurus, you know, I even went into the common law stuff. A man called Bill Thornton. Which run who runs a, a school in the states called the Nitty Gritty Law School. He then spawned a guy called Card Lentz, who then has picked up the the common law mantle. And at the moment, Carl Lentz has been sort of the, the the common law champion. Slightly sideways to Bill Thornton is another man called Rob Ryder, who is a very very hardcore. Um, a common law guru based in Michigan who's very interesting to listen to very considered very very educated again he's an engineer you normally find people that have got an engineering background or, or a design background are the people that can tend, that, that tend to break these chunks of law down and, and, uh, and manage to penetrate some of the, the, the issues that they're trying to help people with but then, as, as you know, well, no, Brad, some of the cases you've dealt with since I've known you, that, that you know, there's been some incredibly, incredibly badly damaged people 
that have taken these theories, and that's what they are, boys and girls. They're theories with that mm. rugby ball under their arm into that football match. And they've they, had, one, sorry. One, 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 sorry to sorry. interject. I sorry. just wanted to try and... Because we haven't even talked about this, I don't think, anyway, in the past. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that the, my opinion on the free man, uh, those people that you just mentioned, yeah. all by one of those names, I've... I've listened to some of their YouTube videos. Yeah. Is these people are so fucking intelligent. Yeah. They are so articulate. Yeah. And I, to be honest, in my personal opinion, and, and I'm, I'm not looking for anything in, in, in terms of you responding saying, oh, that's not true. It's my personal belief. These people are far cleverer than me. They are far cleverer mm. than me. I cannot believe how intelligent they are. I mean, even uh, John Harris, who uh, digs himself... Um, uh, I, to be honest, I couldn't, you know, even do ten minutes of the presentation he does. Yeah. Um, however, the reason why I mentioned that, oh sorry, on, what I was going to say as well is on the free man position. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It makes absolutely perfect sense to me. Yeah. Uh, the only problem is the precursor about the birth certificate. Yeah. At, at binding you. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm really lost on... I'm not lost in terms of I don't understand it. Yeah. But re- relying on purely the fact it's Crown copyright. Now, one would assume the Crown would say the reason why it's Crown copyright is to protect you and them yeah. against you producing multiple birth certificates. Yes. Now, and the free man stuff kind of relates to on the back of all of that. But... Where I actually believe wholly in their position is that how can, say for example, I was born in 1980, how can a statute or act be applicable to me that dates pre-1980? Now, yeah. people who know me know I don't vote and all that sort of stuff. How, how do acts of parliaments and statutes apply to me? The fact is, the reason why they apply to you is because they do, and they tell you they do. <laughs> Yeah, well, as, as as me and you have discussed before, Brad, you know, using, you know, I, I mean, I'm I'm not going to run gurus down, but mm. as, as as me and you know, one of the few, and he wouldn't want to be called a guru, and he's an absolutely smashing guy, is Mark Stevens. And as Mark mm. Stevens says, you know, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, under all that paperwork is a gun. Mm. And yeah, I'm a big fan of Mark. Yeah, um, yeah. And I've got other people that I'm fans of as well but yeah. I, I like Mark the problem is his his argument is so clean yeah it's not even funny yeah exactly <laughs> but but the problem is Brad as you well know where you move in and, and obviously you know you move in the Premier League of, 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 of this whole uh, you, you know um, you know you know in the high court is that if you go into a high level court and say you know, please show me how your laws apply to me. Your backside wouldn't touch the ground. I'm, 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 you know, you're 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 going high high up the political pecking order. You know, again, everybody. You know, if you're looking for courts, you know, if you're looking for justice in the magistrates and and, and county courts, you know, as you well know, Brad, there's some very strange things come out of those particular. Uh, you, you know, courts where, you know, they're not, they don't play to their own rules. And... Uh, uh, they, they use their discretion too much. Yes, yes. And, and as we've discussed, when you're in the high court, you've seen, you know, some jiggery-pokery going on. But I think they're a lot more, because they've got a lot more to lose because they're at the top of their law career, they do tend to... Yeah. You know, I've got an opinion, I've got an opinion on this. Yeah, the reason why I believe um, the high courts are better now. I've lost cases in the high court, um, and I've gone to appeals in the high court as well. But that that said, the reason why I think they're better is because high court judges are there because they want to be there. They've yes. got aspirations to be there. Oh yeah, and what they don't want is rulings overturned by. Circuit judges yeah. or appeal judges, they really don't. Peons. So, so, yeah. But, peons. Yeah. Pardon? Peons. They're, they're, they're peons. They're, they're the lower form of life. Because, right. be, be, uh, because as you know, yeah, yeah, peon. Yeah, it comes. Yeah, it comes. It, it, it comes from the Latin, 
you know, the peons, plebs, you know, the famous pleb gate thing with the conservative MP at the gate of... Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there is... Has that been resolved yet, by the way? Yeah, it's been, it's been resolved. He's had to pay off the, the, the copper that, he, the, 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 he, that uh, apparently heard him say the word. Andrew Mitchell. Right, yeah. So, yeah, well, and, funny enough, I was at the High Court and the BBC were outside. Yeah, this was going yeah. back a couple of months ago. Yeah. Uh, this, they, they were actually uh, hearing it in Chancery. Yeah. And I was speaking to the press officer outside and I said, why are you here? He said, I'm here for Plebgate. Plebgate, yeah. And, I just think, I just, and he said to me, he said, uh, I just think they're a pair of plebs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and one thing I haven't said, Brad, is, is, is uh, you know, going back to, strangely enough, I worked at the High Court for over 10 years. Mm-hmm. And before mm-hmm. people start saying, you know, I'm some sort of government shield, <laughs> which I'm not, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I, I, I worked there as... as as doing design consultancy for the for the M and E, uh, and I was there for over ten years on and off, and and I still got lost in the place. <laughs> you know, to give you an idea of how labyrinthine it is, at, you know, at the High Court. But the reason I'm boring everyone with this story is that um, even even people in legal land go to lunch, and and, and when you sit down uh, with people, you tend to absorb the atmosphere and you tend to absorb the uh, the vibe of people and how they are. And uh, I sat down and got quite friendly with a lot of barristers. You know, they're very very nice people. Um, I wouldn't want to get on the on the wrong side of a lot of them. But one thing I noticed is they're very much uh, a club, and when they're together, um, you're not one of them. Um, and, and they're very much, um, you know, they are a group. They are a, uh, you know, they've got that uniformity, that brotherhood, where you know they, they all wear they all wear the silks, and uh, you know, working in that environment and meeting these people and having to deal with some of them, especially some of the court the court staff there. Um, you know, I know you're you've got to know a lot of the staff there quite well, Brad, haven't you, over the years. Mm. Um, you know these people. Um, you know not only you know your skill set, Brad, is mo- maneuvering your way through the court. Is also dealing with the personalities uh, that that you have to get past. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a large part of the courtroom. Yeah, is character. Yeah, and conduct. Yeah. No, no, when you're pushing the boat. Yeah. You know, definitely that one. Exactly, and and one thing I found really sad. Brad, and I think we've touched on this before, is that, you know, there are certain gurus around at the moment that are very, very quick to throw out around the F-bomb. And the, I call it the F-bomb. I, I yeah, puke that. yeah, the F-bomb. And, and the F-bomb to me is the fraud word. Yeah. Because what what if we get our law books out, boys and girls, fraud has no statute. Fraud goes on forever. So if fraud is found, it basically has, unlim- it has an unlimited liability attached to it, which means that mm-hmm. if you walk into a court and you start throwing the F-bomb left, right and centre, mm-hmm. what, what, what law, someone that works in the law industry, because it is an industry, is going to agree with you, yes, you're right, Mr. Smith or Mr. Jones or Mrs. Smith, yeah, you're right, that's a fraudulent practice. Who is going to put their law career on the line? Now, let's have a look at people's careers. They spend their life, they do their A-levels, they get to uni, get into law school. They come out of law school with X amount of thousands of pounds of, 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 uh, of debt. They pay their debt off. They do their apprenticeship, which is their articles. They get through their articles. And then they finally make it as a solicitor or they finally make it to get their silks as a barrister. Now... All of a sudden, these people start to earn decent money. All of a sudden, these people will afford to put a roof over their head, feed their kids, you know, mm. clothe their kids. They start to go away on holidays. Oh, we could buy that little sh- that little ski chalet in Switzerland. We can do this. We can do that. We can. Oh, we can send little little Johnny and Jill to private school. Now, boys and girls, let's be practical here. If your whole Standard of living, the whole basis of your living is working in legal land. Are you really in, in you, are you really going to turn around to someone that's just coming off the street that's chucking the F-bomb around saying, actually, do you know what? You're right, it is fraud. 
and then put your whole legal career on the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, what I will say, going back to uh, fraud, where I hear it banded about quite a lot um, in... Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to use this word as well, the truth movement. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it kind of depresses me, to be honest. Yeah. The reason why it depresses me, because the connotation I get from it is everybody bitching against each other, Yeah, uh, which is sad. But that, be, that, be that as it may, is uh, I hear the word, it's all fraud. It's all, all fraud. Everything is fraud, yeah? Fraud. Now, yeah. my issue is, looking at it, if you imagine it from a court or legal perspective, is surely all of it is not fraud. Now, let's just say for one one element, the document must have been created by somebody. Yes. Now, was the fact that the document created by someone, was that the fraudster? Yeah, exactly. What, what was the precursor to the creation of that document? Yeah. What activity took place before that? And what elements throughout the entire contract period or throughout the entire document creation is fraud. There's yeah. got to be elements to it. Of it course. can't just be all fraud. Yeah, Now, exactly. if it met five different hands during that process, does that mean that all fraudsters? Yeah. And if so, what element of fraud did they place or yeah. take part in? Yeah. That's the grievance that I get. There's no, there's no core substance to it. But- now... I'm not saying yeah. it isn't fraud. No. The problem is yeah. it's banded about too much and there is not enough detail put to what element is the fraud. It cannot be all fraud because, you know, for example, I mean, you know, you're hearing in, uh, quite often ignorance is no defence. Yeah. Now, you or I know, for example, in the court system, yeah. um, one would assume the lion's share of staff are not fraudsters. No, they're not. But they're part of the chain of custody yeah. of the paperwork process. And they're and they're and they're on their minimum wage job, Brad. They just yeah. want they, they want to come in, they want to do as little as possible and go yeah. home as early as possible without yeah. any grief. And I've seen people stand there uh, in, in 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 court offices, thumping the desk and uh, right away with that attitude. And you've got to kill these people with kindness. Well, that's certainly what I do with all, all you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can be brutal in court, to be honest. Yeah. And I've, I've been mullered for it as well. But, the, <laughs> uh, but by the same token as well, the lower staff, yeah. I'm not joking, I stay perfectly in tune with them. Yeah. Never once have I ever raised my voice. Exactly. Never once have I conducted my, my, myself in an improper fashion exactly. with them. But I can tell you, um, uh, many clerks know me by name, uh, many um, ushers, um, you know, uh, I would approach, shake hands or cuddle um, and and, and just say it's nice to see you, that sort of stuff. And the good thing about it, I mean, actually, funny enough, uh, in court, I I can recall a number of times where the ushers have just burst out laughing, but... Secretly, though, yeah, some of the crap that I come out with, yeah. Now, yeah. there's not crap as in crap, but it's where I put them on task um, to be responsive when they don't want to be responsive, yeah. and I, I, you know, I just sit there in silence, saying, "Well, no, 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 we're not moving forward. Please, can you answer my question?" Exactly. And and, 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 and the thing is, Brad, is you're not part of you, you're not part of the barristers club, are you? That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of yeah. it. I can say what I like. Yeah. Uh, and 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 effectively, I'm not going to get a complaint made against me. Exactly. Uh, but what could happen is obviously is contempt. But you know, I, I haven't pushed it that far yeah. to the point where it's been contempt. But but what it what it does show, um, especially in situations that I've ended in uh, ended up in a number of occasions, um, it just shows that effectively, unless you're going to abide by whatever they say, yeah, they're going to start getting really bloody angry very yeah. bloody quickly, and it's. Very quickly, um, and and throw the toys at the pram. Exactly. Uh, but then you bring it back down again by saying, "What you know? Why do I feel the need uh, or ask uh, to for you to calm down?" Yeah. Uh, you know, I, just, I don't understand that. But by the same token, as well, I have seen specifically in the High Court, um, and it's been really funny actually to watch judges kick barristers' asses. Yeah. 
um, who who basically are opponents to the other side. So so and this is where also I don't like is where people say it's all corrupt. I don't. It's not true. It's not. It tr- is simply. No. True. It, it, uh, it's it's just you know at the end of the day, Brad. What we've got to realise uh, is is us as a group, whatever we call ourselves, and uh, you know people that are listening to this podcast, is that we're the outsiders. We are the outsiders, and if we come in with an outsider's attitude, where we're waving our fists and fingers in the air, shouting and screaming fraud, what mm. what sort of reception? Because you know. Believe it or not, these people that are in the court, and it's and again, I'm probably going to get roasted for saying this, but these people are human. They may not act like humans because they're taking people's livelihoods away and yeah. taking their houses away. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to realise these people are, some of them are psychopaths. Yeah, no, I agree with that. You know, they, you, you, you know, I mean, you know more than most, Brad. You see the cold the cold dead eyes of some of these people but mm. you know all we've got to do is if anyone can google the stanford prison experiment and, uh, and 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 the milgram experiment where these experiments had to be stopped to using students because they were inflicting uh that, that, that they were inflicting pain uh, pain on, on on their subjects and, mm. and and this is because we human beings can be manipulated extremely well. Now, you know, the one thing people listening to this podcast have got to realise is that, you know, like I said, I spent over 10 years in the high court. When you when you walk into that place... Are you sure you wasn't serving, Dean? <laughs> I was working in one of the cafes. Oh, no. OK. <laughs> no, I meant in the cells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. One thing you realise is that, you know... We, we we get our buttons pressed as humans without us even realising it. Um, I read a statistic many years ago that over 80% of any conversation between humans is through body language, Eight, up to 80%. Right. Then that, that's quite shocking when you, when you look at it. So only 20-odd percent is about what we're actually saying. And the reason I'm saying that is that when you walk into high, the high court, it's an ecclesiastical cathedral. And I, I think I mentioned this to you before, Brad, haven't I? When, when you walk Thank into... You a lot of things to me to be <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you don't listen. But <laughs> when you walk in there, you walk into this vast entry hall where you go through the scanners. Now, the, the, the way that architecture is set together, it's a cathedral. Now... Brad, I would say the inside of the entrance hall, the ceiling is about 100. Is, no, it's about, it must be about between 60 to 80 foot high. Mm-hmm. Now, the entrance hall is 60 to 80 foot high for a reason, everybody. What it's meant to do is to make you feel how small you are and how insignificant you are. And when you walk into the high court, you're walking in... It, it, well, Brad, it's a cathedral. The, the only way you could explain it is it's church-like, isn't it? Do you not, what, do you not want to make it... Uh, OK, the, my belief is... Yeah. The building has a lot of grandeur From, and it's designed in a way to show authority. Exactly. You know, this exactly. place is fucking fucking. Exactly. And, and, and this is where the business is done. Exactly. But the court staff, to carry on the continuum... Mm wear these ecclesiastical robes and this ecclesiastical gear. The judges wear 17th century garbs, you know, because it's all about, you know, at the end of the day, we are a visual animal. We're a visual animal. On that that point, actually, um, I actually think (laughs) the lower court staff don't like wearing the stuff they have to wear. No, they don't. The only ones that actually like wearing it is the judges. Yes, exactly. Is that, I think we were there the day, Brad, when uh, the new judges, the new judges' investiture was going on. Remember, and they were coming across in their, in their stockings. And remember, what case was that for? I can't. We were meeting. Uh, we were meeting. Uh, we had a meeting in. <laughs> we had a meeting in the pub across the road. That's a oh, shock. The office, yeah. That's a shock in the office. Uh, yeah. I, I can't remember what we were there, but we had a meeting first thing in the morning, and I, I think I remember now actually. Yeah, 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 and me, yeah. Me and you were chatting away, and and, and 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 the judges were walking across the road with their gowns being held up behind them, and all that sort of stuff. And you know, 
What people have got to realise is these people have trained professionally their whole life. That is the pinnacle of their career. And these... Extremely intelligent people as well. Oh, Brad, you know, uh, and again, me and you will probably be roasted for this. But, you know, I can only speak as I find and hopefully I'm coming across as a fairly straight-talking guy. You know, honestly... Some of the most impressive... I mean, remember that day me and you were at Chancery? I, I won't mention who it was with. Uh, on that um, uh, Enran case. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that judge was probably one of the most impressive displays I have ever seen. I mean, this guy was juggling how many cases, Brad? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's a conveyor belt. Yeah, well, well, I mean, actually, it wasn't a conveyor belt at all, actually. It, he, he he basically managed to jump from case oh, to case. Oh, he had a case. mind like a steel trap, Brad. I yeah. mean, he was... It, but not only was he was he keeping on top of the brief of all the cases of... Yeah. One, I think that the, the, in front of us, or we were being juggled around with a large corporate case, and there was 14 barristers either side with 60, bo- with 60 cases of evidence on, e- on either yeah, side. Remember, the was full, wasn't it? it was yeah, like- exa- <laughs> exactly. You know, and this judge wasn't phased with it at all, and he was absolutely... He was on point, wasn't he? Oh, and, Brad, and what? what can talk what? about that case briefly, because this is the case that I got criticised on, um, uh, where I assisted on the pre-court paperwork yeah. uh, and then transferred it to a barrister. Yes. And the barrister took it on... Yes. Didn't amend my paperwork whatsoever. And talk about it anyway, Dean, going yeah. on from there. Yeah, well, basically what happened was we, 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 we were good to go. And basically what it was was that the, the, the mortgage company, NRAM, were going to take possession of the flat the following day. So it couldn't have been any more 11th hour than if you tried. Uh, you assisted the particular guy with the paperwork. You got it there in front of a, a duty barrister. Uh, by the way, there were two duty barristers there, not, you know, two of them, two court serve duty barristers. You helped with the paperwork. The chap whose, whose property it was got some of the work done. You, you finalised it and got it through. Um, I sat at the back of the court, just. Observed. I was literally coaching the barristers as yes, well. Yes, so yeah, this exactly. Is the we need to go down. Uh, exactly. Uh, don't uh, focus on this. Don't shift from that. Exactly. So, and, uh, uh, and they were very receptive, to be fair. Yeah. Well, well, initially, Brad, they were a bit resistant, but I think they realised. Hold on a minute. He actually fucking knows what he's talking about here. <laughs> so they that, that, that they started to soften towards you, didn't they? You know, they were... But but the thing is, is that, again, you know, kudos to you, you didn't leave it alone. You kept on at them. But you kept on at them in a nice way. You wasn't doing it in a, oh, you know, you wasn't... You didn't have an attitude with them, which yeah. gave them an... Op- I mean, one of them was quite... The older one was very frosty, wasn't she? But it yeah, was well, a, I just said to him, stop being so negative. Yes, exactly, exactly. And and and, and when, when we finally we were in and out three or four times throughout the day, it was quite a it was quite a, a bit of a nerve jangle a day, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and all I could do there was just support and try and help the, the chap in in particular because, you know, his his property was on the line. And the crazy thing is, this was all over a three thousand pound debt that spiralled out of control. Um, you know, I, I, I won't go into the details, but it was it was a crazy scenario, and because um, the guy dug his heels in, and you know, it, it, it you know it just got spiralled out of control. Um, the judge. So in stopped- this instance, though, so, so basically, what I did yep. was did the pre-court paperwork. Yep. Introduced into the barristers. Yep. Convinced the barristers that we had a good legal argument. Yeah, which they agreed. Which they agreed with. Yeah. And then we go, in, we go into court. Um, we, we, we're in there, like, in and out, like, fucking God knows what. In and out, like, yo-yos. Yeah, and we were, we were like, we were winning, weren't we? I say we, but the barristers were winning well, on this guy's behalf. Well, our two barristers were speaking to the barrister for the bank yeah. and were getting traction where they were going to put, obviously, a temporary hold on the sale of the property. Yeah. And, uh, and the sad thing was, after all the good work that was done, and, um, and you know, me and you are sitting at the back of the court and the judge is doing the summing up and you're, help, you're nudging me saying, Dean, yes, yes, yes. It was, you know, it was boom, 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 boom in our favour. Yeah. 
And everybody agreed. All the barristers agreed. Yeah, that yeah, they're all. This is yeah okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, they're all no. they're all sitting there nodding away, and he, and even the barrister from the other side again. I, I, I'm very big big on body language, Brad. As I said yeah. to you, I'm very big. I, I watch I watch the person. I don't mm-hmm. always as well as what they're saying, and 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 his body language was obviously very amicable to what was being said. Uh, you know, the barrister on behalf of Northern Rock Asset, Asset Management, NRAM, and Scumbag. then and then all of us yes, yeah, scumbags. And then all of a sudden, the judge went, oh, no. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. And then what proceeded then was, must have been what? A 10-minute conversation on jurisdiction? Between the judge, the High Court judge, two barristers that were on our side, and the barrister that was representing NRAM, between the four of them, now we're talking, that's a lot of legal brains. It took over, it must have been an excess of 10 minutes, Brad. It felt like 10 hours. Where they actually realised that it was in the wrong, that it, basically it was in the wrong arena. Mm. Because... Yeah, they said, basically they said, because of the uh, two appeals, uh, sorry, two appeals. Two appeals. Which the guy, which I never knew about, to be honest. Well, he didn't disclose that fully, did he? Well, what he said was the appeals were never heard. Were never heard, yeah, but... I wouldn't even knew that. Even if they had two appeals, yeah. I wouldn't even. You wouldn't know. Wouldn't know. They wouldn't wouldn't know. But but of course they knew in the high court, didn't they? Because they had the 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 the, the other side barris the other side's barrister supplied that info. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, my understanding was the appeals were never were never properly well, heard. I mean, he was saying that. Uh, well, clear. His fees, his fees yeah. were due back to him because the appeals were never heard. Well, well, clearly that wasn't the case because from what I could tell. That was obviously uh, material to the case. Mm, so, yeah. you know, they've had this big conflict in front of us, mm. and and the high court judge said, "I'm very sorry, Mister So and So. I'm afraid I've got no jurisdiction in this matter." Now, it's a shame, really, because he 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 was looking to give judgment. Exactly, and 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 to give you everybody again, you, you may be everybody who's listening to this may be punching their, you know, punching the desk, thinking, bloody hell, these two. But this judge, and and, and, and I'm not going to make myself popular here, this judge turned round to the other side's barrister and said, look, what can we do to help this gentleman? Mm, Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Uh, Now, now the judge judge could have just dropped his gavel and said, see you later, sod off. Now, this is what, this is the sort of level of judge we're looking at here. And, and, and then the judge leant on the other side's, other side's barrister and said, look, at least give the chap the chance to go back to his flat Will you allow security to let him in so he can remove his essential items. At least allow this man to do that. And the, and, and, and the barrister said, I don't think that would be a, a problem, my lord. And, you know, the judge stepped out of his remit because he knew that the other side's barrister wouldn't want to say, well, I'm sorry. You know, because they're going to meet again, aren't they? One day they're going to meet again. Well, the other thing is it was, it was an informal undertaking. Yeah, exactly. It was completely, uh, that's right, it was completely but, informal. But, but the ironic thing, though, about that, that case yeah. uh, was that all we had to do was go to the main high court yeah. and follow that same process yes. the following day. We yeah. could have quite simply done it. But that person was so upset... Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, they, 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 they were upset, they were annoyed, they were, you know, the, the whole gambit of emotions. Uh, well, the next day I found myself at the auction house in Kensington, in Kensington Town Hall, uh, uh, giving out a load of flyers to everyone that was there bidding on the auction, and I managed... <laughs> and they called the police on me. <laughs> uh, yeah, they called the police on me, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They called the police on me. What I did was I was quite sneaky. I waited for a little five minutes before the lot come up. Yeah. So I handed out my paperwork to nearly, oh, must have been 70 or 80 people in the hall. So you can imagine there were quite a few people watching me. And I managed, th- th- there were several people in for this particular flat that by all accounts was very nice and very desirable. But... Um, it, it actually was sold there and then. I managed to get rid of all of them apart from this one woman, this one local investor who had actually been to see the flat, 
had known the flat and wanted the flat at any cost. And when I told her that it was subject to high court action, she said, I don't believe you. I'm willing to take the risk. Right. Well, what can you do, Brad? Mm. Yeah, I'm not too sure. But, yeah, okay. All right, moving on then, Dean. Yeah. Um, we've obviously, um, you've been dealing with some legal stuff. Uh, uh, Dean, sorry, one question. How yeah. did we meet? Oh, I tracked you down. Oh. <laughs> what, what it was, was I've heard you a few times on Mark Stevens' show, The No State Project. Right. And every time you was on, you made absolute sense, absolute sense in what you were saying. And the stuff you were saying, I checked into, and it absolutely, sta- it, it absolutely stacked up. And as much of a fan as we both are with Mark was mm. the, the fact that you go into court with, please show that your laws apply to me and please supply the evidence. Mm. Uh, and as you know, Brad, that will only work in certain inst- instances, uh, and and uh, you know you're, you're you're basically fighting an uphill battle. Your approach is very direct and very effective. Mm. 